Okay, now you go. Hello, good morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're happening to watch this. My name's Taz, and I work with Girl Scouts Nation's Capital, and this is... My name's Red, and I work for the Girl Scouts of Central Maryland, and we're excited to have you guys join us for the older girl portion of our series for outdoor skills. So to start off this morning, we're going to build a solar still, and um, we're going to build it this morning so that it has all day to kind of work its magic so that we get the purified water. So what you'll see out on our table is all of the supplies that we think that we're going to need. Um, so we have our big bowl. It actually recommends that you dig a hole in the ground if you look this up. Um, but we're going to use our bowl so we don't have to dig up our yard. We recommend yeah. you do the same. And then we either recommend a smaller bowl or a small jar or cup, depending on the size of your big bowl. So we kind of tested ours out. The jar seems a little small. So we're going to go with the big bowl or the smaller bowl inside the big bowl, okay? And then you also need either duct tape or rubber bands because that's what's gonna keep our saran wrap around the outside nice and tight. Yeah. Again, we're going with duct tape, but if you have rubber bands, more power to you. We went ahead and bottled some of our water. Um, and then we have our salts that we're gonna need to dissolve in the water in the big bowl. And then our saran wrap and our two rocks, okay? All right, so just to be clear, you can just use your sink water at home to make this experiment. So the first thing we're going to do is take our water and add it to the bowl. You don't need a lot of water. We want this to really work later today. All right, so you take your water, you add it to the bowl. You can see there's about a inch of water in the bottom of our bowl. So now, so that we know it works, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create salt water as if we were stranded on a beach and only had the ocean. Okay, so we're gonna add some salt to our water. Any salt will work. We just happen to have kosher salt at hand. Mmm, nice salty water. So you wanna stir it up until all the salt dissolves into your water. But you can also notice, hopefully from the video, that the color of our water is changing due to that salt dissolving. Um, so most of our salt has dissolved, so I think if we keep going just a little longer, It'll go, yeah. we'll notice that all of our salt has dissolved. Um, and Taz, do you know why if our, why we need the salt in here, if we're just trying to purify water, why do we just make it salty instead of drinkable? Oh, so you can't really drink salt water because it dehydrates you. So what we're doing is creating an experiment. So we're making salt water, and then we're going to put our device in the middle, so our bowl. And as the water condensates and evaporates, it's gonna leave the salt behind because it's heavier than the water. And the water you can drink should end up in the middle of the bowl. Take your bowl and put it in the middle here so that you have the salt water ring on the outside, you can see. Uh, you wanna make sure that you don't have so much water that it's gonna spill in top of your, your inside object, be it a jar, cup, or the bowl that we're using. Which is why when Taz was pouring the water in, we were a little cautious about how much we were putting in because we didn't want so much that when we put the bowl in it and kind of mm -hmm. displace that liquid, that it would bubble it, or not bubble, but it would then go over top because we want a nice clean inside for our water to collect. Okay, so the next step's super easy, guys. If you're skilled with saran wrap, we're not so much, so we're gonna struggle for a second. So you would take your clear wrap at home. Um, say you don't have clear wrap, you have a clear plastic bag, something that you can access that is also clear. You could also use a black trash bag um, the clear wrap is nice because then we can see how it's working, but any plastic bag will do, um, any plastic object, and you want to put it over top of your entire bowl and seal it up. We did mention that we're not professionals at saran wrap. You want to make it nice and hot. Again, we're just trying to make sure that it's nice and tight around our edge and then we're gonna run a piece of maybe more than one piece of duct tape around the outside just to make sure ah, okay just to make sure it's nice and tight you want to make it like a lid on the container a nice enclosed process
Oh, almost. Wow, we did so good there, guys. Alright, now the next and final step for this portion of our experiment is that you notice that we have our two rocks. I wasn't sure which size rock we were going to need, so I picked up two um, on a walk this morning. And you want to set it just in the middle there over top of your empty container. So what's going to happen is the sun's going to heat up this water and make it evaporate and then it gets trapped in our lid and then the rock creates kind of a funnel in the middle. And so as it evaporates, it's gonna then condensate and then travel into the middle into your bowl. So you wanna make sure it looks a little bit like a funnel. We might need both rocks. We did it really tight, we did a good job. Okay. And so that's gonna help it drip down in the middle. Okay, so. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna put this in the sunniest part of our yard, which if you look right now is nowhere, but it's just because the clouds have come, come by. Um, so we're gonna put it out in the middle of our yard, away from our dogs so that they can't get to it. Um, and then we'll come check it probably a little early on this afternoon when it's had a couple hours to do its work and we'll see how much water we were able to purify and then drink. Um, at the same time, we'll then also talk about lashing and how to start building those um, structures, those forts, out in the wilderness if you needed to. So we'll talk to you guys in a few hours. Awesome. All right, so it's finally time to check on our solar still. But as you might notice, there's not a whole lot of sun to create our solar energy that we need. We're still gonna check on it because we said that we would and it's been a few hours, so we'll see what progress it's made. But I have a feeling that tomorrow when it's supposed to just be sunny all day, that we might've had a better chance then. But let's walk on over and see it. All right, so for our next part, we're gonna talk about lashing, which is how we're going to, so we're gonna learn a couple of knots. And then lashing is how you can use those knots and any rope that you might have um, to kind of bind sticks. We're gonna use these boards um, because for those of you that may or may not have joined us for our live campfire um, almost two weeks ago, we used up all the sticks in my yard. True. So um, as no new sticks have fallen, we're gonna use these boards instead. But it's the same concept, the knots are the same, um, everything else will be the same. So the first thing that Taz is gonna teach us is how to do a clove hitch. Ready? Yeah. All right. Well, I can do it on your arm and then we can do it closer. Okay. So clove hitch is one of the best knots you're going to need for camping in general. That's how we start with um, lashing for this one. The sheer, we're going to do a sheer lashing day. So you want to go around and make an X, if you guys can see the X. And then when you come back around, whoop, there we go. When you come back around, I like to say X marks the spot. So kind of hold that one and then you want to go right under that X. See? So X marks the spot. And then we pull it nice and taut. And then you can't go either way. Like it stays right there. So that's a clove hitch. So we're gonna do it on this board and Red's gonna bring you over closer to me. All right, so again, so we start, we go across and then we're gonna go around. See, now we made an X. So we're gonna go back around. I'm gonna hold that with my thumb so it stays there. Ooh, go all the way to the end. And we're gonna go right under that X. X marks the spot for us right there and it's okay if it falls around and loosens like that we're gonna snug it back up and dress that knot dress means it looks nice and fancy like formal dinner so we pull both sides nice and taut and that's your clove hitch you guys will notice you can see the x there that taz was talking about and then one end goes that way and one end goes the other way which is pretty important um for the rest well, it's how you know you have your clove hitch correctly. Yep. All right, so Taz is gonna tie it one more time just as demonstration. And then we recommend that you kind of pause um, and do some practices before we get fully into lashing, but we're just gonna keep going. But the benefit of a pre-recorded video is that you guys can kind of pause us whenever you need a little extra time. Yep. All right, go for it. Okay, so again, we're gonna go around the board, make an X. Bring your big end around. This is called your running end. This is the rope that's running. And then we're gonna go right back under that X again. Boop. And then pull taut. Remember to dress your knot, so make it all nice and together, ready for formal dinner. There we go. That one's a little to the side, but it still does the same thing. So you have your X in the middle there, it's crossing it. And then one going to the left and one going to the right. Okay. Awesome. All right. So Taz is going to take that off now. And now we're going to get into the actual lashing where we're, which means we're going to tie three boards together. 
um, so that they stay connected. And we're going to try and tie ours um, so that into a teepee style, so that let's say you need you were out camping with your troop or just individually, and you needed to create a trash can for all the trash that you guys are going to take out with you that you brought in with you, which is a leave no trace principle that we'll talk about in a different part of the series. Um, but this will be a cool way where you can kind of create your own trash can, lashing some sticks together and then putting your trash bag on it so that um, your trash bag doesn't just sit on the ground and get ants or any other insects that might be interested in what you guys are, are eating. Okay, so um, as Red said, this is kind of a this is a tripod lashing, and it's what's known as a sheer lash lashing. S H E A R sheer. It's not see through, but same kind of word. So it's a sheer lashing, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with that clove hitch we just practiced, everyone. So cross it over. I don't know if you can see. And then go back around and come back through my X. Bye bye. Okay. Now I did it. All right, so now what we're gonna do after we have our clove hitch started, we're gonna, we're gonna make sure it's about, oh, a quarter of the way down where we wanna go. And that's gonna play an important part later. So you take your running end and you go around your stick and then we're gonna do our first step of frapping. Not wrapping, but frapping. So you wanna roll your ropes together and this helps keep the, the knot taut as we continue the rest of our process. So that's our first step of frapping that we're gonna do there. All right, now it's kind of like um, this old school thing I used to do when I was a kid and you made these um, wo woven hearts or pot holders. And we're gonna go over that board and under this board. Whoops, see? Okay, and then we're gonna come back around and now what do you think we're gonna do now, right? We're gonna go over this board and under this board and then over this board. So see how it goes over, under? We're gonna repeat that process. We're gonna go again around this one. Pull it all nice and snug. Go over this one and under this one. Get your rope dressed and snug down together. And we're gonna do this about five to seven times or until Taz runs out of rope. So that's three. Now I know Taz said it, but it's really important that we dress our rope, which just means you can see here how each time she's wrapping, she's pushing and cinching the uh, links of rope down together. It's gonna really help later when we're actually gonna start to separate the boards so that they then stay in the kind of the shape that we intended. Now I'm only on number four. You got a lot of rope left. Good. All right, so now this is five. And since we're only gonna use this for trash can and not actual human support, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop here and start with our next set of frapping. And so to snug our knots together, you wanna pull it around. So you see, I, can, I pulled it around to the front and then I'm gonna just lace it through the boards. Make it nice and snug. See, we kind of give it a big hug with the rope. And we're gonna do that on each intersection three times. There's two. And three. So I did that one. So I'm gonna come, pull it nice and snug and taut, and come over this one and do the same thing at this joint. Okay, so again, three times, so one, the second one. Two. Pull my rope up. And ooh, three. Okay. So I'm going to pull it back through and bring this end back around where we started. Now this could be the hard part. We're going to create a clove hitch or two half hitches. I'm going to do two half hitches, which if I do them right, they should be a clove hitch, but we're going to go with that. So I'm going to go around back through and see I made a loop. So my loop here, take my running end and put it through that loop. Oof, just like that. And we're gonna do the same thing again. So 
pull it back through. I have a loop here, see my loop? And pull it nice and taut. And then what am I gonna do with all this extra rope? I don't know, Taz, what are you gonna do with what all this extra see? rope? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do some more wraps um, and frap our rope. So we're just gonna wrap it up nice and snug. Don't do this part too tight because you're really just trying to finish off your rope. Because you've already snugged it down. Yep. So this is this goes back to that frapping that we did at the very start where we just kind of got rid of our mm -hmm. um, extra end. So that's really what we're doing now is we're just kind of using up the rest of our rope that we didn't use need for the actual lashing. Yep. And so now we're going to put it into our tripod shape. You guys can see. Whoop. There we go. And what you can do now with the other rope is kind of just go around and do a regular wrap. Again, if we're not using this to hold people or any safety mechanisms where it's gonna fall, then this wrap will help secure it, but the other way we did it was much better. So here we go. We're gonna wrap our rope around. Just give it a nice secure base to hold it in position. When we get to our end again, we're just gonna do another half hitch. Get our rope up in there. So I pick the top loop, I'm lacing it under the loop Pulling it nice and snug. And there's our tripod, my friends. Which, if you wanna, so here's a real tripod where we had our camera originally. And then look, the lashing looks basically the same. Yeah. Three legs standing up, supporting itself. Um, now Taz, as we talked about in the beginning, if we were gonna put a, a garbage bag on that. Oh, so I think the height right now for this one is really great if you wanted to like hang a pot over a fire. Oh, but true. This isn't really a big enough garbage bag basket, is it? So what we're gonna try and do um, is try and slide our knots down our ropes if we can. Although now I did all this wrapping, so I don't know if I'll get it done. So nice. in other words, <gasps> it's so secure. Look at it; it won't go anywhere. All right, so. Well, if we had wanted to do a trash bag like we talked about, which is okay, which right? I every every great that. experiment, which sort of this is, um, you learn some things every time. We could just hang a grocery bag on it the way it is right now. Okay. Or like Taz said, you could put a pot on it um, mm -hmm. and hang it over a fire, which might be really good. Let's say you don't have a grate to put your pot on. Um, this would be a really great method as long as your sticks aren't too close to the actual fire that you've built. But that would definitely secure a pot. Um, mm -hmm over a fire without you probably having to really worry about it. And then you could be, you'd be able to pick the sticks up and move the pot off the fire if need be. Are you still trying to get it lower? Yeah. I don't think it's gonna go, your knots are too good. Yeah, you're right, okay. All right, so that's kind of lashing. It's a really cool um, outdoor skill. Um, as you saw, it doesn't take a whole lot of time, but there's so many things that you could do with this tripod once it's all together. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if you wanted to go a little further, there's other ways to lash where you could like really kind of build a, start to build really cool like forts and things. Yeah, you could use a square lashing and diagonal lashing where we tie them together like this. Um, so a square lashing, if you do it crisscross like this, you would go around and around and around and around. Um, and so you can do that to build a table or a chair, um, anything you want to relax in, maybe a hammock stand if you build two tripods really securely. Awesome. All right, well, thanks, guys. So our next step is that we're going to go check. you notice that we did, in fact, move our um, solar still out into the sunniest part of our yard. So we're going to go check that now and see how much water we were able to purify. All, All right. right. So as you can see with our um, solar still, we do have a lot of condensation on the top. Mm -hmm. um, I think if Taz gets in close, you can kind of see the difference, yeah. right? Um, and you notice that our rocks are doing their job. We did have to add one, but you can see that it kind of it caves in a little bit. It comes to a point, right? It slopes down there, um, but unfortunately, we don't have any real... We don't have any water inside our little bowl. Um, so like we feared, there wasn't enough sun today to kind of really heat us up. It did start the process. That's what the condensation is. Um, but there's no actual water inside. So we're going to have to wait until tomorrow when the sun comes out. And then we'll probably post pictures <laughs> in of all the water that we were able to collect. And we hope that you guys do as well. We'd love to see pictures of your solar still either in progress or tomorrow once it's completely finished but thank you so much for joining us for our first older girl session of outdoor skills outdoor basics and we'll talk to you guys again next week